Listening to the Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Locking down the middle of the day, live from the Mercedes Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. This is Hunt Palmer. Hunt Palmer coming to you from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studio downtown in the capital city on this Friday. It means we're brought to you by Cork's Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp working towards the weekend. Glad you're hanging out with us here on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Jacob Beck and Casey Gaines back there on the ones and twos. And as you might expect, we're pretty loaded today on a Friday. Preston Guy in 15 minutes, LSU athletes up at the Combine. Mock draft season, we're previewing spring football, so some LSU football talk Coming up with Preston. Chris Demui in his Friday spot. Coming up at 1.30, bottom of the hour. Demui was with us every Wednesday last year? Sounds right. I think it was every Wednesday. Uh, he'll join us on Fridays this year to talk a little bit of baseball. Steve Schneider, former sports director for a long, long time over at Channel 9. He's going to come on to talk a little bit about the uh, basketball high school state championship games that are going on over in Hammond. Had a wild one yesterday with Parkway throwing in a half-court shot to beat Walker. Um, those games are televised. Steve is going to tell you where you can find them and give us a little update at the end of the hour here from over in Hammond, America. Of course, LSU and Vanderbilt tomorrow uh, from up in Nashville. I'll preview that one in hour number two. The Saints have moved on reportedly from Marcus May. Michael Cobble at 2.30 from Houston getting you ready for LSU and Texas. So lots and lots over the next two hours. Appreciate you buckling up and riding with us here. Presented by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. It's a Linton Friday. Great time to go out and get some Corks. LSU in Texas tonight in Minute Maid, it should be absolutely awesome on so many levels. I think both of these teams are very good. No matter who LSU pitches, and reportedly that'll be Luke Coleman, it's going to be a great matchup of arms. I've been in that uh, environment for LSU in Texas twice now, and it's awesome inside Minute Maid when those two fan bases pour in there in Houston. And uh, it's easy to watch, which is great for those that uh, are wondering how you're going to watch LSU tonight against Texas. You can do it on YouTube on the Astros channel. All you have to do is go to YouTube, type in Houston Astros. Their channel comes up. You see the live button. I'm right now got on one of my tabs, uh, Houston and Texas State. Uh, it's 3-2 Texas State right now in the bottom of the sixth. I'll be quite honest with you all. I'd really like it if one of these games went like 45 minutes over or so. I've got somewhere to be from four to six, then I'd like to make it run an errand and get home for seven. So if they start at like 7.20, that won't offend me. Um, I know that's not what y'all want to hear, but I'm just being honest with you on this Friday. But yeah, it's easy to watch, and it should be an awesome game. For those that don't know a ton about Texas, uh, this is a 7-1 and one Texas Longhorns team. Uh, they beat San Diego two out of three in the opening weekend. They swept Cal Poly last weekend. Cal Poly didn't score. The final scores in those three games were 2-0, 6-0, and 7-0. And so Cal Poly, not usually a, a pushover. That's a team uh, that took on Missouri in the opening weekend and got a game from Missouri. And Texas just held them down all weekend with their pitching staff. And the guy that we expect LSU to see tonight is the same guy that LSU saw last year on a Tuesday night in Austin, Texas, and that is LeBaron Johnson. A six foot four, 210 pounds. He's a red shirt junior, and he's really, really, really good. He's a uh, uh, he was all Big 12 last year. He's a second team All American last year. Uh, he posted an eight and four record last season, 2.9 ERA, so sub three there. In 86 and two thirds innings, he struck out 98 hitters and only allowed opponents to hit 231 against him. His best outing of the year was probably in the regional down in Coral Gables against Miami. They gave him the baseball in the Marvel game on Saturday of that regional and he threw a complete game nine innings one run on seven hits he struck out eight only walked three exceptional performance down there in Miami and they ended up coming out of that regional they gave LeBaron Johnson the ball in the super against uh, Stanford and wasn't quite as good four and a third innings in that outing uh, out in Palo Alto gave up four runs on seven hits walked four only struck out three I mentioned that LSU saw LeBaron Johnson last year in Austin. He was superb in that game. Five innings of work, uh, only three hits, no runs. He struck out nine in five innings against that lineup, um, only walked two. So he's very, very good. What you're going to see from LeBaron Johnson tonight is a fastball uh, around 95, 96 miles an hour. And what appears to me to be a split-finger pitch, it's something that is hard and 
entails, I don't know if it's some kind of super sinking two-seamer. I don't know if it's a splitter. I haven't seen the radar gun on it enough to know exactly what it is, but it goes downward very, very sharply and very, very quickly. Plus, he can throw a slider as well. This is a premium arm. This is as good as most Friday night guys you will see. You know, He's probably not quite in Hagen Smith's class, uh, but he's really, really good. If you sit and, and watch the game tonight and you're expecting LSU to go out there and, and pummel Baron Johnson and, and put up a six spot in the first three innings, I've got some news for you. That's pretty unlikely. LSU's game plan tonight is going to be the Jay Johnson special here. He's going to try to work the pitch count up. LSU's going to try to see some pitches, put the ball in play, um, draw some walks if they're available. And the key is, the the goal is more likely to get him out of the game as opposed to knock him out of the game, right? That's, that's what LSU's goal is going to be tonight. I love this spot um, for LSU. I love the opportunity to see high-level arms because we don't know a ton about this LSU offense right now. We know a ton about Tommy White. We know a ton about Matt Bingham, in my opinion. But I don't know a ton about Paxton Kling. I don't know a ton about Jared Jones. I don't know a ton about Steven Milam. I don't know a ton about Brady Neal. I don't know a ton about Jake Brown. Those guys are going to see something tonight that they haven't seen a ton of in their baseball lives. They will see it a ton the rest of the way this year. Most Fridays and Saturdays, you'll see something like this. And LeBaron Johnson's not going to be the first pick in the draft, but he's he's really good. And so I'm excited to, to see how LSU handles it. I'm expecting not a ton of early offense from the Tigers. I'll gladly be surprised if, if LSU does knock Johnson around the, all around the yard. Um, but it's, it's a good early season test to kind of see where these guys are. As far as the offense goes for Texas, it's two guys that stand out to me um, as far as the production in their lineup early and kind of what kind of pro prospects they've got. It's Peyton Powell. Uh, last year led uh, Texas in hitting at 339. He had 27 multi-hit games. That also led Texas. Right now he's hitting 441 with four home runs. So small sample size this year, but the sample size is good enough for Peyton Powell that you know he's a really, really good hitter. She's going to have to watch out for him. And the other one's Jared Thomas, who will hit leadoff for Texas tonight. He is white hot to open the season. Texas has played eight games. He's got a hit in all eight, but he's got multiple hits in seven of the eight games Texas has played. He also is six for six on stolen bases. So you got Thomas at leadoff, Peyton Powell in the middle of the order. Those are the two guys you'll have to worry about. It's LeBaron Johnson that will likely start for Texas. So that's kind of a quick scout of the Longhorns. You care more about LSU, so I'll give you my thoughts on that here. Um, the report from uh, college baseball what's some college baseball podcast reported last night that Luke Holman's going to pitch. First thing I thought of when I saw that was Jay Johnson's going to find whoever texted them that information and blow a gasket because <laughs> we know what Jay thinks about pitching matchups and the advantage or lack thereof of revealing your starting pitcher. He doesn't like to do that. That was supposed to come out 90 minutes before first pitch, as we know with Jay Johnson at this point. Somebody on the team or with the coaching staff or somebody's parents had some information that Luke Holman's going to pitch and texted it to said media source, and now it's out on the internet. Now, I don't know how closely David Pierce monitors Twitter and how much stock Texas is going to put into the fact that somebody's tweeting that out, and maybe it's not right, but I'll, for the sake of the discussion, pretend that it is right. Um, I'm perfectly fine with this. As I said earlier this week um, on my show on Tuesday, because I missed Monday's show, I said, look... I realize Holman's been significantly better than Hurd through two weeks. I realize that Thatcher Hurd is still trying to find his way and that Holman has, has struck out a lot of guys and worked a little bit deeper into the games than Hurd has. But it's not a, a top of my concern list what order these guys pitch in unless you've got Paul Skeens or Aaron Nola or someone that you can put at the front of rotation that you feel like you can dominate game ones with. Holman may be that guy. I'm just not ready to completely buy that stock yet. I'd be... Again, pleasantly surprised to be incorrect about that. But I think this is a great opportunity if he's the guy to show that, hey, maybe this is for real. This is more important than blowing it by Central Arkansas or Stony Brook or whoever the case may be. This is Texas. This is a regional team. This is a potential super regional Omaha type team. You go to Minute Maid and carve them up for six innings. That shows me something and really probably sets the stage for him taking the ball in game one in Starkville in a couple of weeks. I don't think it's some sort of, you know, 
Scarlet Letter on Thatcher Hurd if he bumps back a day or two. Remember, Gage Jump is available as well. So is David Coleman. So LSU's got some options as far as starting pitchers go. But whoever gets the ball tonight, whether it's Holman, whether it's Hurd, whether it's Jump, whoever the case may be, I did hear Doug Thompson on Matt's show yesterday say he wanted to see Gage Jump dominate, and I thought maybe Doug had some inside information. He may have, but he said that on the show yesterday. We'll see. I'm not ready to you know, stake my bank account on the fact that Luke Holman's pitching, but if that is the case, I'm good with it, and I'm excited to watch. I'm excited to watch this game um, because it's not a high-stakes game. Losers are just going to play again the next day and, and keep on down the road, but it's going to be a great environment, great brands, great programs, future conference rivals, and some big-time pitching and, and guys digging in. So it should be a lot, a lot of fun in Houston. If you're headed to uh, Minute Maid, um, be careful and uh, maybe by the speed limit or close there too. Appreciate you locking us in. And uh, be loud tonight as, uh, as LSU and Texas get things rolling in the uh, Astros Foundation College Classic tonight at 7 o'clock. As I mentioned, uh, Texas State and Houston are playing the morning game. Uh, it's 3-2 to two Houston at this point. So that means that the middle game is Vanderbilt and ULL, I believe, uh, if I'm getting my, my teams right there. So that'll be at 7 o'clock tonight. You can watch it uh, on YouTube or any of the uh, Houston Astros social media platforms. Our Friday show is brought to you by Corks Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. It's a Lenten Friday. Get on by for that delicious jumbo gulf shrimp, crispy fried catfish, the shoestring fries. You can put those on a po' boy as well. They got your crawfish etouffee, your pork chops, if you're not observing a, a Lenten Friday. It's all fantastic. And it's right there on Government Street between Foster and Jefferson. Swing on in, grab some delicious food. They'll get you out of there very, very quickly. And it is a fantastic dining experience over there at Corks. When we come back, we'll talk some football with Preston Guy of TigerBait.com on the Hunt Palmer Show. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. Boudreaux's Electric. You're not going to be able to watch LSU in Texas tonight if your power goes out. And if you work from home and the power goes out, you're in a little bit of trouble. Protect yourself from it. Boudreaux's Electric can do that with a Generac generator. They're a certified Generac dealer. They are a premier Generac dealer, which means... You buy, they're in the top 3% of Generac dealers nationwide. And if you buy a Generac generator from the folks over at Boudreaux's Electric, you're going to get a warranty, whether it's seven, 10 years. And I'll tell you this, for $5.20 a day over the lifetime of that warranty, you get the peace of mind of knowing, hey, power's not going out at my house. I'm going to have my air conditioning during hurricane season. My fridge is not going to go on the fritz and spoil everything. Not with the folks over at Boudreaux's Electric. Give them a call, whether it's in Donaldsonville or right here in the Gonzales area. You can find our friends at Boudreaux's Electric. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the jimsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the jimsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. Elevate brand visibility, ignite customer engagement with the power of radio and digital advertising combined. Guarantee Digital Media brings the two together as a trusted media partner in Louisiana for nearly a century. Claim your free digital audit at GuaranteeMedia.com. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. The best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology. From desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. 
A U Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking $17,500 off new 23-1500 Bitcoin trucks. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking $17,500 off new Ram 1500 trucks. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals. But many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that... Mascona inviting you to join us for Friday's AFR, presented by Don Juan Cigar Bar. The Riot Radio Hours return, getting you ready for a busy baseball weekend in Houston and the latest from the Combine. Join us 3 to 6, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. You're listening to The Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. Chris Demui, former Tiger Southpaw, national champion, going to be with us in 15 minutes talking a little LSU baseball. But it's football time because it's Friday at 1.15. That means we go to our guy Preston Guy on the Jim's Firearms Hotline. He of TigerBait.com joins us now. Preston, how are you? Hey, Hunt. How's it going? Going well. Um, I want to talk about Makai Wingo and Mason Smith running the 40 yesterday. But first, I saw a retweet of yours uh, from Jaden Daniels up at the Combine saying that uh, he's not going to do any of the workouts at the Combine for his teammates because he wants a big crowd at Pro Day so that everyone comes to see him and by proxy sees the rest of the guys on the roster. Are you buying that? Um, Whether I buy it or not, it's a really good answer. It is. Um, I think... If we're being honest, I think we all know it's more about being in an environment you're comfortable with, throwing the guys you're comfortable with, and <clears throat> really doing it like that. Um, I- I'll say this. Whenever I've talked to media outside of LSU guys, from day one, I've always told them, I mean, look, this kid's a likable guy. I-, I remember after the Florida State game, the first time I ever got to talk and interview him, very likable guy. Very accountable guy, um, and I think that the, the, that's the kind of answers he's done just kind of subtly uh, during his time at LSU where you kind of understand the kind of humility and, and, and just good charisma he brings to the table. I do think he's going to do very well in these interviews and with teams, and I could see why a team would want to use a top five pick on him. Is there any chance he goes first? Yeah, I, I think there's a chance, not like a big one. I think Caleb Williams kind of has that uh, as locked down as you, you can. But, man, there's some red flags popping up with, with Caleb Williams that aren't there with Jaden Daniels. Um, you know, things like, you know, we have all know about the character issues and stuff. He's not using his own uh, agent. You know, he puts FU on his nails and then, you know, he doesn't want to – well, I'd say the biggest red flag I've seen so far is the um, uh, this sheer fact that he won't do the medical exam yeah. at the combine. I mean, because if we're being honest, that's the biggest, you know, thing of all. If you fail a drug screening or, you know, you some health issue pops up, I mean, that uh, that that's the biggest thing that will drop, drop your, you know, drop your stock and – it tends to be the absolute minimum guys participate in if they show up to the combine. So I'd call that a red flag for sure. Now he said he's going to meet with teams and, and do the medical with them. He's like, you know, not all 32 teams can draft me. So why do all 32 need medical? Well, that to me leads me to believe, okay, so what are you hiding? <laughs> Is there something like some sort of issue that you need to, you know, 
delay this this medical exam for uh, or or what? Just speculation is all I got, but it is a red flag, and it is one that might open that window for Jaden to come in and impress people, but but we'll see. Feels like two or three for Jaden, but I'm not ruling out number one either. We'll see how that goes over the next couple of months. Makai, Wingo, and Mason Smith, a couple guys LSU would have loved to have back on the defensive front next year, but they don't. Now those guys are moving on professionally. They ran the 40 and are working out at the Combine this week. Do you see their results? And what do you think about the draft prospects for both guys? Uh, well, I saw Jordan Jefferson and um, Makai Wingo in particular is having a very, very impressive um, – uh, performance so far a four eight six forty and I think he had a one six four ten yard split which for defensive tackles is is even more impressive uh I, I think the way these guys are measuring uh it, it kind of raises some questions about what the heck was Matt House doing you know because you weren't getting super high level of production out of uh, either of those two guys and you know it makes you question why why weren't you you know, because the measurables are all there. I, I think as time is moving on, I think we're more and more evidence suggests that there was some serious coaching issues for LSU's defense this last year. And there were, in fact, guys with talent on that defense. What do you think of Mason Smith's prospects as far as where he could go in the draft and what his NFL career could look like? Yeah, I mean, he's got all the measurables. I mean, talking about a big guy, big, strong player, um, just – none of the production. Uh, I think that he's a guy who needs to be coached up very well. Uh, I think he's a guy who uh, needs to learn to play with leverage and go out there and produce. I do think he's a guy, you know, day two or three, if he's there, I could see why a team would like him and want to bring him in and give him a chance. Because, you know, if you can get him playing more disciplined, and, and, and really kind of – and not to mention, I think he needs a little bit of a conditioning program. I think he needs to trim up a little bit. You know, he never really got a full off-season of conditioning simply because he dealt with so many injuries during his time at LSU. So uh, I, I do see the potential there. I just – I mean, I, I don't see him going in the first three rounds. What about Brian Thomas and Malik Neighbors as you started to look at some mock drafts and, and kind of um, see what their immediate future holds? I mean, I'd say their immediate future holds uh, a handsome paycheck yep. and a first-round draft pick for both. Uh, I saw a little bit of buzz about Brian Thomas possibly sliding down to the Saints, which would excite me, um, uh, simply because we don't know what you're getting out of Michael Thomas there. And, uh, man, he, this is a deep, deep, deep receiving class. I mean, we're talking about guys. I could see four or five of these guys being your number one receiver in many years. Think about guys like Roma Dunsey and uh, Malik, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. I mean, really, I, I could see Brian Thomas being a number one receiver in most years. But this in this season, we're going to see him probably slide back to the middle of the first round. Uh, and then I think, I do believe that um, uh, Malik Neighbors, if he's not your first receiver off the board, he's your second. So, uh, he'll be going to uh, a team up there. I've seen New York a bunch. Yeah, a lot. And, yeah uh, you know, it, it, and that's assuming New York doesn't go for a quarterback. I also saw uh, before before Jaden split up to a unanimous top three pick, a lot of teams were saying, well, maybe New York goes with Jaden Daniels. So we'll, we'll see what direction they go with Daniel Jones, but I'm going to tell you what, he, I definitely think he's he's a very safe pick is what I would say about Malik Neighbors. I just don't see any ways. There's no character issues. There's no athleticism issues. It's, you know, I, I don't think he's the kind of guy where, you know, a tweaked ankle and he loses a half set and he's no good either. Uh, that, that There are a lot of receivers who rely on their pure athleticism. I, I think Malik Neighbors is about as safe a pick. So I, I, I think uh, it's going to be a good draft day for LSU. Uh, and all, all those offensive players they're recruiting in 2025 are going to be uh, – should be pretty excited looking at what LSU's putting out there. When you look over this modern run at LSU and you look back at like Clayton and Henderson in, in 03 yeah. and you look back at maybe Bo and Doucette and Beckham and Landry and Chase and Jefferson, like it, th those duos, do do Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas still belong in that conversation? Oh, for, for sure. For sure. I, I, I would put them 
maybe even above Odell and Jarvis. I mean, that sounds crazy. I mean, if you went back 10 years ago, if I could tell you that LSU would have not one, but two duos of receivers better than that, I I would call you crazy. But, I mean, I think we all acknowledge that Chase and and Jefferson are are, are better. Um, But, yeah, I mean, they absolutely belong in the conversation, whether or not they're better or not. I'm going to tell you what, they're going to get drafted higher. I think Odell Beckham was number 13. And uh, Jarvis Landry was like the 43rd pick of the draft. He was a yeah, second, rounder. second rounder. Yep. There's no way either of those guys fall to, in the 40s. They'll, they'll be off the board by 25 uh, at the latest I see. So, um, yeah, on paper, they're right up there with them. You know what's a cool thing to think about, though, is that you look back at those guys, and, and it's Devery and – and Clayton, Louisiana guys, Odell and Jarvis, yeah. Louisiana guys, Jetson Chase, Louisiana guys, Thomas and Neighbors, Louisiana guys. Like that's none of them are from out. You have to go back to Dwayne Bow in that in that discussion to get somebody out of Louisiana. Yeah, it's it's pretty nuts, but that's kind of what makes LSU a special job, and, and not just receiver DBs. The speed guys grow on trees around these parts. I mean, you just do not have to invest very much or work very hard to find a kid who is good enough to be a first round draft pick in either of those, you know, those speed positions. That's, that's what makes this job so special. The LSU, the history of LSU is not one of administrative competence. That's just the the hard fact of the matter. It is a program that, you know, once you've got guys, you know, at least Bernardo tried to build the fence back up around and then Saban really did fortify that fence. Once you start the culture of these guys coming to LSU, uh, it's hard to undo that, you know, and, and that is really what props this job up as special as it is. I think it's one of three jobs with elite recruiting geography. You know, Ohio State has a talent rich Ohio to recruit, and uh, Georgia has, you know, the state of Georgia to recruit, and no one to really split it with. I mean, yeah, there's Florida, but I mean, how many teams have to split that talent in Florida? And yeah, there's Texas. How many teams does Texas have to split that with? I, I uh, teams like LSU, Ohio State, Georgia, they get these kind of athletes all over, and they don't have anybody to share it with. That's why those are special jobs. Spring uh, football right around the corner. We'll talk next week, Preston. Have a great weekend. Looking forward to it, Hunt. See you then. Preston Guy, TigerBait.com, with us every Friday, talking a little Tiger football combine ongoing up in Indianapolis. We'll have all the results on Monday, and we can kind of dive into how the LSU guys perform. Makai Wingo, by all accounts, doing very well. I don't think Mason Smith's time was awful yesterday, and certainly there are other drills that are a little more important for him as he uh, embarks on his professional career. And Jordan Jefferson also had a nice little showing yesterday as well. So we'll uh, we'll talk more about that coming up on Monday's show. We'll pause for a brief moment. We'll come back with Chris DeMui talking LSU baseball. It is the Hunt Palmer Show. The Hunt Palmer Show. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. Bayou Ford has the new inventory to get you in a new Ford truck or SUV today or customize your next vehicle just the way you want. All new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile powertrain warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. BRAC teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, 
and even soar, you imagined we delivered gold. BRAC, your number one park system in the nation. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. The best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. What's holding you back from learning the language you've always wanted to know? Too hard. Takes too long. Not with Babbel. Babbel's lessons take just 15 minutes a day. 15 minutes isn't long. Nope, and they're fun. So you don't realize you're learning a language, but you are. In three weeks, you're able to start having conversations. And Babbel's lessons are built around real life. And with Babbel, it isn't hard. It's, it's perfect. perfect. Now try Babbel free. Just go to Babbel.com. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Bayou Ford and Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Five brands on one lot. Shop BayouAutomotive.com. 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Monday's OTB will recap LSU baseball's trip to Houston. Did they manage to get it done against the Longhorns? Plus, Jim, men and women's basketball, NFL combine news, draft, a ton to get to this Monday. It's off the bench, 7 to 10 a.m., 104.5 ESPN. This is the Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. Update from Houston. They're in the top of the eighth in the opening game of the Astros Foundation College Classic. Texas State leads Houston 5-2 to two at 3 o'clock, so an hour and a half from right now, ULL and Vanderbilt will go at it. And tonight, 7 o'clock, the big one, LSU and Texas should be a packed crowd at Minute Maid. Should be a lot of fun, so we're talking about it here on this Friday edition of Hunt Palmer Show, presented by Corks. Went out to the Jim's Firearms Hotline. Chat with our guy Chris Demui, former Tiger at Southpaw and national champion. Joining us every Friday. Chris, how are you? Doing good, buddy. How are you doing, Hunt? Doing good. Uh, did you ever play in one of those down in the Superdome, that one where LSU would play like Tulane or whatever the case may be? The Winn-Dixie Showdown. There man. you go. So, uh, yeah, we, I played in three of them, I think. And it was cool because I remember growing up and I went to a couple of them, but it was like LSU, They it was, it was like state. So I remember one year it was Louisiana versus North Carolina. We huh? played. UNC Duke, North Carolina State. Then one year it was um, like uh, like Ole Miss, like State, Southern Miss, and then somebody else. I think yeah, but it was it was always like LSU, Tulane, and uh, I guess UL or somebody like that. But it was cool, yeah. But the Superdome sucked for baseball. It was terrible playing surface. It was it was brutal. <laughs> but yeah, we played in them. <laughs> but playing in those, I mean, playing in a big environment. I mean, obviously Minute Maid is going to be a little more conducive to baseball than the Superdome. But I would think for college kids who are used to playing on a high school field and then playing out in the in, at the box to go in and play on this stage, I would think it's got to be really cool for these guys. Oh, that I mean, that's a, I'm super jealous of these guys. You know, that's a dream come true. Obviously, that's where everybody wants to end up, and the fact that you get to play there and in front of that crowd and just get to pitch on that mound and even little things like shag and BP, you get a chance to look around and just go into the locker rooms and stuff. Yeah. That's, uh, that's gotta be an amazing experience for those guys. Something uh, I'm very jealous of, but, uh, what a chance to just take it all in. And 
Let's talk about the LSU pitching staff uh, first. Um, the report is that Luke Holman's going to pitch. I'll I'll believe that fully when when I see it in in the lineup card. But um, your thoughts on Thatcher Hurd and Luke Holman specifically through two weeks? I think Holman obviously his stats speak for himself. He's just been lights out, you know. And I think uh, when I saw him pitch in the fall, he was lights out then, and he, he did a good job for Alabama last year as well. So he just kind of picked up where he left off now. I've been, a, I wouldn't say disappointed in Thatcher Hurd. I just, I thought he'd kind of pick up where he left off after the College World Series and some of those um, end of the year outings that he had where he was really dominant. You know, I, I kind of took at a glance at his stats last night. He's like, I think seven innings pitched, 11 hits, which is the most on the team, five walks, which I know you've talked about before, and I think 12 strikeouts. So it just doesn't seem like he's able to locate his fastball as well as, um, I mean, that's what I can tell. I think the other thing, too, is everything he throws is hard. You know, he's got a 95-mile-per-hour fastball. It's hard breaking ball. Everybody talks about his spin rate. He's got two hard breaking balls. But he has nothing. I mean, I thought last year he had a changeup, at least, from what I remember. So I'd, li- I'd really like to see him get something that at least slowed the timing up a little bit. Because to me, it's just hard, hard, hard. I mean, everybody, so, um, was, yeah, everybody was kind of banking on that that or, or, uh, Oregon State outing where he struck out 12 and the, the national championship final where he, he was so good after the Langford home run. And you think, okay, he's just going to build on that, and he'll be a, a dominant SEC starter. Do you still believe that he's going to be a dominant SEC starter? I think he can be. I think he'll turn it around again. You know, it just seems like it's just a little bit of location issues with the fastball to me. You know, and then he kind of gets in spurts where he gets in trouble a little bit or gives up blue pits or he's just it's just not going well for him or as dominant maybe as everybody thought he would be but i think he will be look i think he can he's proven he can pitch in the sec he can dominate teams he's got a great stuff you know so i just think it's a matter of time for him to click and who knows maybe he's just putting a lot of pressure on himself to to be that guy and take over for schemes this year maybe that has a little something to do with it as well Let's talk about a couple of lefty newcomers, Gage Jump and Kate Anderson. We'll start with Gage Jump, who closed out opening day and then got the start uh, the following Monday uh, and has looked you know, pretty pretty salty in my eyes. What have you seen from the, the newcomer from the left side? Yeah, I think from when I saw him in scrimmages and stuff, he's kind of the same guy I saw then. You know, it jumps, his stuff jumps off the page. And um, I had a chance to well listen to, to – Jay Johnson talked to some alumni um, before the season started, and he thought Gage Jump was the best pickup in the transfer portal, period. And that's including uh, Burns, who went from Tennessee to uh, Wake Forest. He just thought a lot of people forgot about Gage Jump because he got injured at UCLA. So, I mean, anytime you throw 94 and 96, you know, from the left-hand side, and you have a breaking ball for a strike, and you just pound the zone. I've been super impressed with him. I think he's a huge addition to this staff, you know, to give somebody that can start at a high level. And then I saw Anderson pitch a couple times um, in high school. You know, he went to St. Paul's and he got injured. Um, he had Tommy John last year, and he's a lefty. Once again, another lefty. They got a ton of lefties this year, and he's a low 90s guy, and he looks like he's just, um, you know, going to continue to get better. He may have some hiccups throughout the year, but I think he's in a good spot now, right now with the midweek, you know, not a ton of pressure and just continuing to build, um, you know, stack good inning upon good inning. So I've been very pleased with both those guys. Let's play the long game here. Uh, May 12th. I don't know where LSU will be on May 12th, but we're talking about you know, two and a half months from now. Who do you think the three weekend starters will be? I think it's going to be Holman, Jump, and Hurd. In the SEC for a weekend series, I think it's going to be those guys. Um, I like David Coleman. I just His stuff seems to tail off a little sooner than I would hope for it. Um, I, I think the one thing I've been a little disappointed on this year, I think the pitchers, you know, it just – they just haven't been maybe as dominant as you would like to see, especially against the level of competition LSU's faced. They're getting a lot of, you know, a lot of walks. They let innings kind of um, get out of hand sometimes, and it feels like Jay maybe has to go to the bullpen, and you're seeing guys mix and match innings. Or I'm sure he planned on, you know, maybe a guy going two innings to seal this win, and all of a sudden he only goes two thirds because he can't throw strikes and he gets behind. But if I had to put money on it now, I would go Hurd, Holman, Jump, in some type of order. But I think those are probably your three. Um, weekend arms in at May twelfth. What do you think that would mean for Cade Anderson um, as far as a role? Are you good with him going five or six innings every Tuesday? Do you think he's got to pitch on the weekends in relief? Like, what is next for him? I think I think he can go four or five innings, you know, midweek, and and then come in and uh, be a specialty guy on the weekend. I think Ackenhausen can do that. I think Lower can do that. I think Herring can all do that. You know, all those guys have that in their repertoire, and that's great. 
especially when it comes to crunch time and the midweek games, you know, they're not as important. You're focused on SEC, and then you think about the regionals, right? The ability to be flexible and for guys to take on multiple roles and do multiple things is a huge advantage. And I think Anderson, as long as he continues to progress, right, and gain confidence and, and get out, I think he could easily be that role. You know, three innings in the midweek, he gets his pitch count up, and he's got two to three days off, and then he can come in and give you an inning and a third if you need to or come in and get a couple lefties out, and I think he'd probably be fine with that. Paxton Kling offensively has, has kind of found it here over the last week. Um, that was the hope. Uh, what do you what do you think about the performance by the sophomore center fielder? I'm really happy to see it. You know, um, he's he's that five tool prospect that a lot of guys talk about that the scouts always like to refer to, right? I mean, he's gap to gap center fielder. He's got a ton of pop. He can run. I'm glad to see him stealing bases. I would love to see him get like like 15 bags this year. And um, I really like him in the leadoff spot too. So um, he just offers you a lot of things. And what a lot of people probably don't realize is Paxton Kling is draft eligible this year. So this potentially could be the last time you see him, So, um, which is a scary thought because you love to have him for another year. But, uh, you know, he's got the total athletic package, and I'm just really happy for him because you saw signs of it last year, and it just kind of got away from him to where Jay had to go with the guys that were going to get him to Omaha and who were going to win the national championship with. But uh, he's just the potential in the ceiling is through the roof, you know. I was listening to Doug Thompson yesterday on, on Matt Moscona's show, and, and Doug's got access to a little bit of LSU's information because he's on the broadcast team. And, and he gave a statistic, I can't remember it offhand, but Jerry Jones has taken a lot of sliders just off the plate based on what LSU has tracked through two weeks. Have you watched him and, and seen any growth in his approach at the plate? We know the power's there, but what about as a complete hitter? No, I, I totally agree. And that was that was one of my concerns coming in for the, to this year, right, is can Kling live up to what he's supposed to be, what everybody thinks he will eventually be at some point, and it seems like he's starting to get there. And then Jones, they need somebody besides Travinsky to protect Jones, and obviously Brady, Brady Neal's doing his fair share of that. And the biggest thing is, can he lay off breaking balls down in the zone when he's behind the count? And I've seen him do that numerous times to where, as a pitcher, I, I have a feeling a breaking ball is coming. And last year, you know, he would have swung at that pitch, and you've seen him hold up numerous times, and he uh, still has that raw power to where he makes some people pay. But he's just going to have to continue to do that, you know, and continue to advance his uh, plate approach and just make people get the ball up in the zone to where he can hammer them. And uh, he seems like, you know, he's having better and better at bats. So it's been a nice change of pace to see, you know, because, as you know, people kind of figured him out towards the end of last year. And so uh, – just making adjustments, you know, just his, his growth of the plate has been nice to see. You think Stephen Milam forces his way into the lineup every day? <laughs> I think he's there. Yeah. He, uh, I know they had a ton of hype coming in with him, and I worried about him after the fall, and I think even Jay said as much, right? He's a little overmatched, and I didn't see him in the spring, but he kind of turned things around. And um, versatility, switch hitter, and he seems like he has really good, you know, he crowds the plate from the left side, which I always hated. It makes pitchers uncomfortable. And he puts the barrel on the ball, you know, and, um, you know, he's like a Mike Fontenot kind of clone. I know people want to compare him to Bregman, but I'll give Fontenot some praise. You know, he plays second base kind of short in stature and just just raked. And it seems like Milam's going to be that guy. So, obviously, the competition is going to ramp up a ton this weekend. You know, the pitching is going to be at a whole another level. So, we'll see how these young guys continue to adjust, you know, and uh, and, and move forward. But I like him a lot. He is Chris Demui, former Tiger, left-hander, and with us every single Friday talking some baseball. Have a great weekend, Demui. We'll talk next week. All right, you too, Hunt. Thanks, buddy. Update from Houston, Texas State, leading Houston 5-3, to three, but the Cougars have a couple runners on in the top of the eighth inning. LSU in Texas, as we mentioned, 7 o'clock tonight, first pitch. When we come back, Steve Schneider, former sports director over at Channel 9, my old boss when I was an intern, will join us next. The Hunt Palmer Show. Today's not a great day to be outside, but those days are coming. Spring's fantastic down here in South Louisiana. If you're going to spend some time out at the pool, you're going to spend some time out at the grill cooking, or the kids are just going to be in the backyard, why not have the folks at Audio Video Security Solutions come out and put in some great speakers and some sound outside that you can control right there on your phone? They've done it at my place. Mitchell Fisher and his team would love to help you out. Check them out at avssla.com or on Instagram, avss underscore br. They do fantastic work, and it's so, so easy to use. Our old house, we didn't have anything like this. The new house, we're like, oh, this is fantastic. 
you can have the same thing. You can have the surround sound in the kitchen, surround sound in your viewing area, wherever the television is, out on the back patio or around the pool. They can help you out with it. It's audio video security solutions right here in Baton Rouge. Give Mitchell Fisher a call, 225-439-7920. That's 225-439-7920 or avssla.com. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the jimsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the jimsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking $17,500 off new 23-1500 Bitcoin trucks. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking $17,500 off new Ram 1500 trucks. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared towards seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology from desktop to production segment units. Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales service and finance team and backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded. Because Moscona inviting you to join us for Friday's AFR presented by Don Juan Cigar Bar. The right Ready Hours return, getting you ready for a busy baseball weekend in Houston and the latest from the Combine. Join us 3 to 6, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. You're listening to The Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. You know, back in 2009, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. I was in college, just not really doing a whole lot of anything. So dad said, hey, you better get an internship or a job this summer. So I called up Channel 9. Steve Schneider answered the phone and said, yeah, come on in. Here we are. What was that? That was 15 years ago. Steve Schneider, former sports director over at WAB Channel 9, now... Watching a little high school basketball over in Hammond. He joins us now on the Jim's Firearms Hotline. Steve, how are you? I'm great, hon. That's a great story. <laughs> uh, 
I had to actually move outside the arena. I told you I'm going to do my uh, call from the arena. It is so damn loud in there. I can imagine. Uh, well, based on what we saw last night, uh, oh this is one of the God. most unbelievable things I have ever seen. Um, for those that <laughs> missed it, Walker, who was, I believe, undefeated, had a two-point undefeated, lead. Undefeated, yep. And uh, yep. gave up a half-court shot to Parkway at the buzzer. Is that the crazy? You watched it, a lot of high school sports in I your was, day. It happened right in front of me. It happened right in front of me. And that – that girl, I think they should go ahead and say uh, Chloe Larry Day in Bozier, February 29th, every four years. <laughs> I mean, absolutely. They lose Michaela Williams. I guess they didn't miss a step. They all of a sudden, they're throwing no, they half didn't. quarters to win. Um, so set it's, the scene for us over him. Walker. They, those kids were undefeated. I saw them play a few times this year. They're like a, a racehorse track team with basketball uniforms. They run people to death and had the lead but couldn't make free throws, made uh, – you know, turnovers you don't usually see them make. And, uh, man, Parkway made them pay. Big prayer. Set the scene for us over in Hammond with what's going on over the la- over the course of this weekend. Yeah. Uh, well, we've been here for two weeks. We were here for all the soccer championship games last week and then moved right into the uh, uh, alumni uh, arena here on Monday and did uh, 30 basketball games by the week's end, five games every day. So we did four days of semifinals, and now here we are on the championship uh, round. There's five games today. One of them just finished. The Oak Hill fans uh, got beat by 22. Those are the people that were kind of really loud next to me coming out. Uh, J.S. Clark in New Orleans is the team that won. Southern Lab is up next. They're playing Northwood Lena. And uh, we've got three more games tonight and then five more games tomorrow starting at noon. And they're all live on the – LHSA Network. That's what I was going to say. We thought that we, you had you'd kind of ridden off into the sunset, retired from Channel 9, and all of a sudden Jeff's putting you to work with the LHSA Network. <laughs> tell, everybody, tell everybody how they can watch uh, all these awesome basketball games. Yeah, it's really easy. It's an app for a smart TV, okay? So if you want to see on your television, at your business, at a restaurant, at your house, all you need is Roku, Apple TV, or Amazon Fire Stick. If you have one of those three services, all you have to do is search LHSA Network, put in your email, and you've got the live channel. It's free. We have programming 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. When we're not carrying live soccer games, live girls basketball games, live boys basketball games all next week, 30 games from Lake Charles. When we're not doing softball and outdoor track and baseball championships, we're running a lot of the great games from the past, whether it's the eight games that we did in the Superdome or the five volleyball championships or six hours of live coverage of cross-country from Natchitoches, which I'm not a cross-country person, but that was some amazing stuff with the drone flying around and all those kids giving it everything they have, nearly you know collapsing at the end of these races. It's the best human drama you can find. The drama last night, as we've mentioned a couple of times, but I, I've watched that clip a bunch of times. It's made the social media rounds. It's an incredible broadcast. And Jeff Palermo, credit to Jeff Palermo for getting that moment because you could probably just say, oh, it's a half-court shot. It's not going to be anything. But he was right on it in the moment, and that thing went flying, and he went nuts when it went in. That was uh, as, we, as unbelievable as I've seen. Oh, we've got so many great people lined up with us. Jeff Palermo, uh, Garrett Wolverett, uh, Victor Howell, who used to work with me at the station. Uh, is doing a fantastic job on the desk work. Of course, we had Emily Ward uh, do four days of commentary. Never done in her life. Just was a rock star the whole time she did it. I'm sure we're going to see a lot more of her uh, on our broadcast in the future. So, you know, Jeff has lined up a lot of great people uh, to help us launch this the right way, for sure. I'd kind of gotten away from high school sports since I was in high school, but I've I've called some stuff over at Parkview over the last few years uh, with Jeff, and it's there's just nothing quite like high school sports to get back into it. and I've actually re, you know, kind of rediscovered a passion for it. Uh, to watch these kids play is, is so much fun, and y'all are doing such a, an awesome job of, of bringing that to everyone here in the state of Louisiana. So appreciate that, and uh, and I'll let you get back in there and watch some some hoop, but appreciate you coming on, Steve. Absolutely. Appreciate it, Hunt. Take Steve, care. Absolutely. Steve Schneider, former sports director over at WF. AFB now with the LHSAA network. You want to watch some high school hoops over the next two weeks because they've got the boys over in uh, in Lake Charles coming up. You can do that at LHSAA network. It's the app on the smartphone. You can watch it. It's it's fantastic. And I, I, I've talked about it now three times in the last five minutes. But the fact that Park, Parkway threw in a half court shot at the buzzer down two to win the state championship is it's it's a, a life maker. I mean that's that's a, just a moment that you'll just 
never forget. I, I feel so badly for for the girls at Walker who had such an unbelievable season. Um, to have it end like that is just heartbreaking. But on the flip side, for Parkview to see that happen, I, I, I think you could give that girl a hundred more basketballs and she doesn't make it. But in the one that counted in the moment as the clock expires to Wednesday, she throws it in from half court. Truly unbelievable. Uh, and Steve and Jeff got an awesome thing going over there at the uh, LHSAA network. It's it's great, great stuff. So appreciate Steve for, for jumping aboard. That's it for hour number one here. We're always presented by Corks on Fridays. CorksFishAndShrimp.com. Check out the menu if you're looking to feed the office, have a birthday party, game watch party, tailgate, anything that you've got and you want to get involved with some catering, Corks can help you out with that for sure. And... Uh, it was a fun first hour. Talk to Chris DeMuglio about some baseball. Talk to Preston Guy about some football. Talk to Steve about some high school basketball. And we move on into hour number two. I got to get you ready for LSU and Vanderbilt tomorrow on the hardwood. We'll chat uh, to Michael Cobble, who's over in Houston, covering the Astros College Classic. The Saints have decided to part ways with Marcus May. So we're not slowing down anytime soon. I hope your Friday is going well. We'll pause for Sports Center and come right on back. One more hour to go in this week. It's the Hunt Palmer Show. Kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Visit us online at reliefwindows.com. The importance of doing this Fortified program and offering it to people down here is number one, the only real chance you're gonna to get to do this is when you put on a new roof or build new. And through companies like Hudco, who's kind of leading the way in this thing, it's gonna offer the customers a huge advantage in the insurance market and the price of their insurance. You know, we're not looking to, we're not looking to make a fortune off fortifying. We're trying to give you a better product than our competitor yeah. at the moment. I'm trying to do something that he can. I'm trying to give you something better. So a lot of these insurance shops, you're getting a re-roof, you're only paying your deductible. Let's sit down and talk about the Fortified and let's see what it does to your insurance premium. You're getting a steal. Yeah. You're getting a brand new roof and a Fortified certificate for your deductible, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think we're rocking and rolling. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, 
and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Bayou Ford has the new inventory to get you in a new Ford truck or SUV today. Or customize your next vehicle just the way you want. All new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile powertrain warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. to the NFL Scouting Combine continuing today in Indianapolis. Many of the top projected picks meeting with the media. Quarterback Caleb Williams out of USC said he hasn't thought about not going number one overall, adding, I'm not thinking of a plan B. J.J. McCarthy, meanwhile, touting his record as Michigan starting quarterback in interviews with teams. McCarthy saying the only stat he cared about was W's and, quote, we did pretty good in that category. 48 starts from McCarthy with the Wolverines. He won 27 games. J.J. McCarthy, the 23rd-ranked player on Mel Kuyper Jr.'s latest big board. McCarthy said, by the way, he would not participate in the broad jump or the vertical jump during tomorrow's workouts because of hamstring tightness, but he would throw. Doctors found a Jones fracture in the right foot of Alabama cornerback prospect Kool-Aid McKinstry during medical evaluations. McKinstry plans to work out on his pro day later this month, then undergo surgery. Sources so tell the ESPN's Pete Thamble should be ready for training camp. Nine games slate in the NBA tonight, highlighted by an ESPN doubleheader. Kick it off in Boston with the Mavericks and the Celtics. Boston has won nine consecutive games, starts 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. It's followed by the Bucks and the Bulls in Chicago. ESPN Baton Rouge. Brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish, and Shrimp. Live from the Mercedes Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. This is Hunt Balmer. Hour number two, Friday edition of the Hunt Palmer Show, presented by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish, and Shrimp. Our last hour of the week. Michael Cobble at the bottom of the hour from Houston, Texas. He's, of course, sports director over at WBRZ. We'll be talking some baseball with Cobble coming up at 2.30. Saints talk coming up in 15 minutes, but we start with LSU and Vanderbilt in basketball. Tigers indoors tomorrow. And Beck, 24 hours and 30 minutes. That's how long you have to go yep. to win this wager. It's already over. I won. It's not over. It's 24, it's over. 24 hours and 28 minutes. So you're telling me Vanderbilt's going to fire their coach 24 hours before their game? How am I supposed to know what they're going to do? You I don't know, what know do, Vanderbilt's huh? athletic director. You know what I don't do. know what the boosters think. You know what's going to happen. I feel like I might lose this one. Yeah, you lost. For those that have no idea what we're talking about, back in January, uh, I asked Jacob Beck if he thought that Jerry Stackhouse would coach against LSU. Vanderbilt was like 0-50. Uh, they had lost a million games in a row. Not that and, many. Uh, it was not good. And uh, I thought that they would fire him for sure. Since then, Vanderbilt's gotten white hot. I mean, they are sizzling. They've won three of their last eight. And uh, I think Stack saved his job for the LSU game. So at 2.30 tomorrow... Uh, you can tap dance on my grave as Jerry Stackhouse coaches a game in March. I told you I he's going to he's going to be back next year too. He Don't worry, not. he is not. I have evidence to the contrary on okay. that. I'll present it here briefly. Okay. Um, look, Vanderbilt's eight and twenty on the year. That's awful. Uh, they're three and twelve in league play. That is also awful. Uh, they're one and eleven away from Memorial Gym, which is awful. They're only seven and nine at home, which is not awful, but it's not super great. They've won three of their last eight. Here's Jerry Stackhouse's SEC records in order through five seasons, well, four and, and almost a fifth. Three and 15, three and 13. Then he really got it rolling, and they were seven and 11. That was back in 2022. Uh, 11 and seven last year, building, building, building. <laughs> Two and 10 this year. Uh, he will be fired. Listen to some of these statistics about Vanderbilt basketball, and as I say all this, I'm well aware that they're probably going to beat LSU, and I'll have to eat all this on Monday. But... Possessions for game on offense, they're 260th. Only A&M and South Carolina play slower than Vanderbilt uh, in the SEC. That's not a crime, but that's just a fact. They, they play very slowly. Here are their offensive ranks here. 
Offensive efficiency, 294th. It's not great. Points per game. Well, if they play really slow and they're not very efficient, they're not going to score a lot of points. They're 308th in the country in points per game. Assist to turnover ratio. Slightly better than 308th. 307th in the country in assist to turnover ratio. Assist per possession. They are number 352 in assists per possession. Only 10 teams in college basketball do a worse job of assisting than Vanderbilt. Two of them are Houston Christian and Lindenwood, and I never heard of either one of those. Percentage of the points they get from two-point range, 271st. Ah, we found something they're decent at. Percentage of their points they get from free throws, that's 50th in the country. They do most of their scoring from the free throw line. However, they don't do anything else well in offense, including rebound. They're 212th in the country in offensive rebounds. They play slow. They don't shoot it very well. They don't assist. They turn it over a good bit. They don't get rebounds. They score the majority of their points on free throws. Is the defense any better? Well, let's start with defensive efficiency here for the Vanderbilt Commodores. 309th in the country in defensive efficiency. Opponent's shooting percentage, 249th in the country. Block percentage, how often are they rejecting shots? They can't shoot or defend. Do they block any shots? No. 234th in the country. Steals per possession. Maybe not to block shots. Maybe they're a little quick. They get in the passing lanes. Nope. 204th in the country in steals per possession. Do they let teams get offensive rebounds or defensive rebounding percentage? 194th. How did that sound back for your guy who's going to be back next year? It's it's not good, but but look, last year last year was good. Okay, look, eleven and we seven. Talk, but we talked about this. So, so so Missouri might go over in the conference, but you yes. still don't think they're going to fire their coach because they had not. a good season last year, right? So and and then Buzz Williams may I mean, Dex A&M had a decent they season. Had, they but, had a great year last year. The yeah, point they had, is but, that now you look at Missouri's coach and, and uh, Kevin Gates, they've got fifty percent of his years are good. Jerry Stackhouse is completing his fifth year, and 80% of them stink. It's Vanderbilt, huh? <laughs> My cousin's husband's a Vanderbilt alum, and he just he really loves the doors, and he just is disgusted by the state of their athletic program. Basketball, which they used to be good at, they stink. Football, they're completely non-competitive. And you look at baseball, and they're not quite at the level they once were. But this is, it's not a good team. I don't know how else to say it. Ezra Mignon is a good player. Um, he scored uh, 22 points back on Tuesday. Uh, Tyron Lawrence scored 21 points against Arkansas on Tuesday. Those two guys in the backcourt have been decent for him. Not really much else. So these two teams have played previously. Uh, they played uh, back on the 9th of January. And LSU won that game. Uh, by a final score of, I can't even see the final score on the box score. That's not a great box score. There it is. 77 to 69 was the final score in that one. LSU won it by eight. The biggest difference, aside from where the game's being played, the PMAC 2 Memorial Gym, is that Jalen Cook probably played his best game in that game against Vanderbilt. He scored 28 points on 10 of 19 shooting. He made all seven of his free throws. Um, he was really good in that game, and I don't expect that we'll see him tomorrow. That could change. He could play. He's been in street clothes the last couple of weeks. I, I don't think he'll play. Um, so I think Trey Hannibal will have to run the point, and that is a big change from what we saw against Vanderbilt the first time around. Um, LSU did shoot the ball very poorly from three-point range in that game, just three of 16. However, LSU did its best job of the SEC slate in terms of taking care of the basketball against Vanderbilt, only eight turnovers. Now, that shouldn't be a huge surprise because Vanderbilt doesn't really turn people over, but it's been a problem for LSU for three months, just turning the ball over far too often, and that's got to change in this game. They should shoot it better than Vanderbilt. They should rebound better than Vanderbilt. They should defend better than Vanderbilt. They should do a lot of things better than Vanderbilt. If you turn the ball over, though, you limit your shot uh, options and you allow Vanderbilt to get out in transition and let their two guards run and, and play a little bit, which you don't want to do. This, I, I, I'm not trying to be like fun. I was trying to be a little bit funny with the statistics because they're ridiculous. Vanderbilt's numbers are so bad. Now, I haven't looked at Missouri and I'm sure those are even worse when we get to that at the end of the season next week. But I'm not trying to be hyperbolic here, and I'm not really trying to like poke fun because Trey Hannibal and Ezra Mignon are really, really good college basketball players. I don't think either one's got a professional future of much substance, but they're good college basketball players. Ezra Mignon has been the best player at Vanderbilt for two years. Trey Hannibal has been the heartbeat of this team. So I'm not trying to take shots at these guys when I say this. I'm just giving you the reality of this. This may be the poorest shooting point guard matchup in college basketball this year. 
these two guys are really good at attacking the rim. They're athletic. They finish at the rim. They get to the free throw line a lot. They hustle. They do a lot of things really well. They're just two point guards that don't even try to shoot threes, which is so, so rare in any level of basketball, specifically in, in college basketball. Ezra Vagnone in SEC play has attempted 19 threes. He's four of 19. And we know Trey Hannibal doesn't really even try. Against Mississippi State, he forced up a few. But these two point guards don't ever shoot threes. At what level of basketball post fifth grade do point guards not even attempt to shoot threes? That's what we've got on Saturday. I just wanted to point that out because it's, I think, a pretty uh, interesting piece to this game. Uh, as far as the front court goes with Vanderbilt, there's not a, a ton of, of solid play. Van Allen Lubin is probably their best front court player at 6'8", 230 pounds. Uh, he shoots 50% from the floor in SEC games. Uh, not much of a threat from three-point range and not a great free throw shooter, but he will get some rebounds. This just is just going to come down to LSU playing a clean basketball game. If LSU plays a clean basketball game, limits the turnovers to under 14, 13 or under on, tur on turnovers, I'll live with. You knock down some shots and you don't allow Mignon to parade to the free throw line time and time and time again, LSU will be just fine. It's important for Jordan Wright to keep his emotions in check in this game. Uh, this is a guy who was Jerry Stackhouse's first signee at Vanderbilt. This is a guy who scored over 1,000 points at Vanderbilt, has a degree from the university, and I'm sure loved his time there, um, but wanted to come home and, and put on the purple and gold for the hometown team for a year, and he's done that. What a cool college experience that is for Jordan Wright, but he's going back to Memorial Gym for the first time, and I'm sure that's going to be emotional for him and something he's going to have to to deal with internally when he goes out there. He didn't try to force the issue too much against Vanderbilt here in, in Baton Rouge. He only shot two threes. He did miss them both. He got to the free throw line a lot, shot eight of those, ended up with 15 points in the game, had two assists, and did not turn the ball over. So a clean game against him the last time out. Question is, can he do that returning back to Nashville? That'll be very, very important. If you're LSU, um, if you just do the things that are – just that are in routine that take care of the ball, knock down some shots. Don't force it. Don't foul too much. Don't have to do anything out of the ordinary. This is a Vanderbilt team. that's not good. Every statistical metric tells you they're not good. So you don't have to do anything special to beat this team. You don't have to go out there and make 16 threes. You don't have to go out there and, and get 14 steals or turn them over. I'd like you to push the pace a little bit because Vanderbilt doesn't want to play at that pace. Um, but you ought to win the game. You, you should win this game. Uh, what we're kind of calling for here is a split of the Vanderbilt and Arkansas games on the road. Arkansas may be mailing it in. I don't think Vanderbilt is. They played very, very well this week at Arkansas. So you're going to have to go up there and beat a team that's playing pretty hard. Maybe Arkansas is mailed in a little bit. But if you get a split there and then you can come home and beat Missouri, that's 9-9. Nine and nine. I'd love it if they got to 10 and won out. But this team has not shown necessarily the consistency you're looking for to, to rattle off four games in a row at the end. That's just that's not something I can sit here and tell you that I expect LSU to do. They haven't been that good all year. We'll see. Uh, LSU and Vanderbilt tomorrow in a Memorial Gym at 2.30. Um, I, I'm, I'm picking LSU to win this game. I think the Tigers do go up there and, and get a win in Nashville. And uh, It's been a tricky place for some teams. Alabama had Vanderbilt hang around for a little bit. Usually Tennessee um, has to... Has to has to throw some punches late to beat Vanderbilt in Memorial Gym. LSU hopefully can go there and, and get a W. Chris Blair and John Brady will be on the call if you want to listen to it. Pre-game on Eagle 98.1 will start up at 2 o'clock tomorrow. Michael Colbert is going to be with us in 15 minutes. When we come back, the Saints have made a decision regarding their secondary. We'll tell you what that is coming up next. The Hunt Palmer Show. One Bath and Closets. OneBathandClosets.com is the website. David Duvall and his team, 30 years redesigning and remodeling bathrooms and closets. It can be a big job. They can handle a big job with redesigning the entire bathroom. Soup to nuts. One bath and closets can handle the entire thing. But if you just want to do something small, you've got a tub you don't really use, you don't take baths, it's kind of old, well, take it out. Tub to shower conversion. Take that bathtub out, put in a walk-in glass shower, changes the aesthetic of your bathroom, changes the functionality of your bathroom as well. Add some value to your home and just makes things a lot more pleasant. They're in your bathroom. David Duvall and his team can do it. you got to get that free consultation at OneBathAndClosets.com. You can see testimonials, pictures of their great work there as well. Have David and his team come over and get that process started today. It's One Bath and Closets. The website is OneBathAndClosets.com. 
In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales service and finance team and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving. Monday's OTB will recap LSU baseball's trip to Houston did they manage to get it done against the Longhorns? Plus, gym, men and women's basketball, NFL Combine news, draft, a ton to get to this Monday. It's off the bench, 7 to 10 a.m., 104.5 ESPN. We've got some college basketball and NBA action for you here on the station this coming weekend. Tomorrow, at 1 p.m., we've got Illinois and Wisconsin in a big Big Ten matchup. And then also on Saturday at 7 p.m., the Nuggets and Lakers in a nice little Western Conference matchup there. And then also on Sunday at lunchtime, the Sixers and the Mavericks, Embiid versus Doncic there. That's all going to be on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. This is the Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. Beck, I forgot to bring something up on the air. Were you Coke shaming me before the show? Yeah, but you had two co you had two cans of Coke. Well, this is I a understand. Big cup. Okay, I get it's a big cup. That's mean you have to fill it all the way to the brim. But I want to. Okay, but you you said you were trying to be healthier uh, this year. It's not going well. Yeah, I, I wonder why. <laughs> Probably because you're drinking two cokes. I will say this: we we there are a few issues in our society. I mean, look, insurance costs are not great. Uh, you know, there, there are a few things that, that could be better yeah, there are. in the world today. However, I will say that we have made a ton of progress as a society in vending machines' ability to take a dollar bill. Yeah. I remember in high school, like, trying to flatten oh, that bill yeah. out the coins to get too, the, the Powerade machine at, the, at high school to work. Yep. I mean, it just never did. 
I intentionally put a crumpled up bill and in worked. the vending machine. It just went right in this Impressive. morning. It was just a dream. So wow. no, we've got some things to work out clearly, but, but the vending the machines vending are vending machines are humming, baby. That's good. We like that. Michael Cobb will be with us here in ten minutes. Um <laughs> something that's not going great for the New Orleans Saints is the, the Marcus May signing. Um the Saints decided that uh, Marcus Williams was going to be a little pricey for them, even though he was a really good player, aside from you know, the Minneapolis miracle. He was really good, and the Saints figured, oh, we can't pay him, but we can we can find another way at safety. So they signed Marcus May in March of 2022. So what's happened since they signed Marcus May in 2022? Well, September 1st of 2022, he got arrested. Charges were dropped, but he did get arrested. September of 2023, he was suspended three games for violating the league's substance abuse policy. Some that had happened driving under the influence with the Jets, knew it was coming, but he was suspended three games. Late in 2023, he missed the last six games of the shoulder injury. So basically, surrounded 17 starts, which is one season out of two that he played. He had 97 tackles, three of them were for loss, two interceptions. So three tackles for loss, three massive off the field incidents. This was a three-year deal worth $22.5 million. There was a $6 million signing bonus and $14.5 million guaranteed. And the report is yesterday the Saints have said, we've seen enough, Marcus. Thanks for your service. You're out of town. So they'll save $1.39 million by releasing him. If it's with the post-June 1 designation, which they get two per year, they can save about $6 million more to help sign draft picks and whatnot here in the offseason. This was an absolute failure of a free agent signing by the New Orleans Saints. I don't know that it was completely uh, ill-conceived. He had a really good season with the Jets two prior to coming to New Orleans. You had a hole to fill. He was a veteran. He wasn't overly expensive, but you did pay a pretty penny for him to try to come in and plug a hole in what was a really good defense at the time. And you got injuries, you got arrests, you got suspensions, you got millions of dollars, and just not very much production from Marcus May. Uh, so the Saints have decided, hey, we're we're going to move on. So th- that's a quality move in my eyes and a pretty obvious one to make. It doesn't save you a ton of money, but it does save you a little bit. And quite honestly, where the Saints put themselves in terms of the salary cap every year, every penny does count. Because while you look at some teams and they've got you know $72 million worth of cap space, inevitably this time of year, you look at the Saints and they're $80 million over. Now, they always get under, and I have no doubt they will get under with relative ease this time. You've restructured Derek Carr. They've gotten Cesar Ruiz done. You're dealing with Marcus May here and get letting him go. I feel like Michael Thomas' move is here coming in the near future. And they'll get under it without really adding a ton of, of free agent depth to their team. You're talking about ads like you, you saw last year with Colin Saunders, which Nathan Shepard, which is necessary but not necessarily overly impactful with those two guys. So you free up some money and you do open up a hole opposite Tyron Matthew in the secondary. And the question is, okay, well, how do you fill this hole? I think the obvious first answer here is Jordan Howden. Now, he was your fifth-round pick last year. Played 16 games, started seven of them. Um, he made 43 tackles, five passes defended, and I thought showed real potential as a, a starter down the road. We're now down the road. He counts less than a million dollars toward the salary cap. You're paying this guy a fifth-round salary. These are the guys the Saints must hit on over the next couple of years if they're going to have any sort of resurgence and and try to make a playoff push. You've got to have third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh-round picks make the team and find their way into the starting lineup because they don't have enough available dollars to go get impactful guys to plug all the holes they have. You've got issues at both tackles on the offensive line. You potentially have an issue at running back. You've got to find more wide receiver play. I don't know what you're doing at backup quarterback. What are you doing at corner? Is Marshawn Lattimore here or there? You've moved on from Marcus May. What's your contingency plan at linebacker? I don't think it's Zach Vaughn. So after Werner and Demario Davis, what do you have? There are a lot of holes to be filled, and you cannot fill them all with free agents. They don't have the money. You've got to fill these holes with guys you have drafted who are cheap. Jordan Howden, you have drafted. He is cheap. I think he is option number one as your starting safety. Now, you've got some free agents that aren't going to cost a lot that were on your roster last year. Jonathan Abram, Lonnie Johnson, 
Hugo Amadi. They're all free agents, and do you decide that those are options you want to bring in to compete with Jordan Howden? I would suggest probably so. At least one of them will be back in New Orleans. They can look elsewhere, but you're not talking about high-dollar guys. You're not talking about guys entering their prime. You're, you're talking about inexpensive role players who are there to compete for a roster spot. But Howden comes to mind first. In summation here, this, is, this was just a whiff by the New Orleans Saints on Marcus May. You just whiffed here. It happens. You can't do it very often. So I think Howden is the guy to start with. And then do you need to address that position in the draft? Depends on how you feel about Abram, Johnson, and Amadi. If you decide those two guys, those guys are more than you want to deal with, well, you may have to use a late draft pick. The question really is, in big picture, when you come off the safety position, you look at it from 30,000 feet, how many draft picks are the Saints going to have? Are you going to move Marshawn Lattimore for, for draft money? Draft money, draft picks. Are you going to move Alvin Kamara for draft picks? Is there a market for that? I don't know. They don't have a ton right now because they continue to move up. But the guys you drafted in the late rounds need to build out the edges of your roster. And hopefully Jordan Howden is the first guy there to replace Marcus May, who will be elsewhere uh, coming up with the Saints. I would imagine that post-June 1 designation is going to be put on him, and they'll save that six, six million extra dollars. But we'll just have to see. The deal made sense at the time, I thought. Hester disagrees, and he was talking about that this morning. Because you were going to get him less expensive than Marcus Williams, who was going to cash in big. But it didn't work. So now you got to figure out what you're going to do back there, opposite Tyron Matthew, who's still... Playing at a reasonable level. He's not the pro bowler he once was, not the all pro he once was, but was okay at the end of last year and certainly got his hands on the football a few times as he's known to do. But the Saints continue to, to try to, to plug some holes on a roster that's not quite where it needs to be if you're talking about winning the division and getting into the playoffs. We saw that throughout the entirety of this season. So that's your look at the New Orleans Saints. We remind you all, if you're looking for Saints content, you can always find it on YouTube. Uh, you can find it at Hunt on Saints. Subscribe to that channel. All of our Saints videos will populate right there on your homepage. And uh, we appreciate any subscriptions, comments, likes, all that helps us out a great deal trying to get our, uh, our content in front of as many people as we can. Michael Cobble is in Houston, and I kind of got what I asked for here because it is six to 6-6 six between Houston and Texas State. They're playing in the top of the 10th inning. Houston is threatening Supposed to start Vanderbilt and ULL at 3 o'clock. That's not going to happen because that's 35 minutes from right now, and they're not going to be able to play in 35 minutes. So maybe a little bit of a backup in the schedule. I'm just asking for about 20 minutes so I can get home from the boat show and get over to uh, to my house and, and watch uh, first pitch. So uh, just an update there from Houston. 6-6 six, six between Houston and Texas State. We'll go to Houston coming up next and chat with Michael Cobble. It is the Hunt Palmer Show. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. It was a human day. Barefoot children play. Looking for the summer shade. Time to slip Like cypress stumps, your roots are planted deep inside of me. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. 
There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. BRAC teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques, Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana. Mascona inviting you to join us for Friday's AFR, presented by Don Juan Cigar Bar. The right Radio Hours return, getting you ready for a busy baseball weekend in Houston and the latest from the Combine. Join us 3 to 6, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Discover the largest showcase of outdoor gear in Louisiana featuring everything from fishing and hunting equipment to ATVs, boats, and more at the Louisiana Outdoor Expo March 15th to the 17th at the Lamar Dixon Expo Center. Register for your chance to win tickets today at 1045ESPN.com and you can catch Hunt at the River Center today in just a few hours. That's all uh, coming to you courtesy of 1045ESPN.com. You're listening to The Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. I will be at the River Center boat show season. I'm excited. Haldane was there earlier. Said it was a good time. Hunt, how, much, how, 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 how much? How uh, much? How much are you going to be uh, understanding on what's going on in there? I know about boats. Yeah. No, I don't know anything about boats. I know they go fast on water, and I like to have a beverage when I'm on one. Yeah. I don't know how to drive one. Although I did save the day one time because we were in a boat and it accidentally got put in reverse instead of like neutral. And we were backing. We were in a in a pier, and it was backing towards another oh, boat. You stopped. And somebody it. was on it, and I didn't. I'd never driven a boat before, but I think I knew. It's pretty if, easy. If you yeah. push it forward, it's going to go forward. So I got up there and like slammed it forward and saved the day. Didn't wow. I have two boats crash into each what other? What a man! At the uh, Destin Pier, huge. It, it, of me. It, that's pretty big. Yeah, you you saved a lot of uh, a lot of lives and money at that time. I think as well. Probably could have been a lawsuit waiting to happen. Yeah. So you know. Right. It's pretty easy to drive, but it's really not that hard. Like I'm not here to pat myself on the back. It was, I mean, it was I'll, I'll do it for you. It, it was two, it was two things. It was so it was the awareness to see what was happening yeah. and the agility to spring forward. I'm sure I had a beer in my hand. Yeah, to yeah. Spring forward, beer in hand, and to get the boat going the right direction. Impressive. I'm just it's truly amazing. So we called Cobble during the break. We're supposed to talk with him here, and he didn't answer. So the question is, what? Oh wait, is, I think he's calling right oh, now. I was gonna see what is Cobble doing. Is he at the pool? It's a Hello? little chilly for that. <laughs> is that Cobble? Hello. Is he at the ballpark? Is hey, he taking a nap in the hotel? I mean, what do we'll we think? We'll see. He's we'll, on right now. What do you think he was doing? 
I don't know because it was going straight to voicemail, and usually that's when you have your phone on like do not disturb yeah. or something. So like, I'm guessing he was doing something very important. Call, were you taking a nap? No, I was driving. Uh, uh, see, that's driving. very very safe, very safe. You maybe a company vehicle or company uh, rental, so you don't want to you don't want to get into a collision there. I know what I really need to do is I need to put the station number that pops up into my thing. <laughs> yes. All, if I don't have your number, then it just goes right to voice. Ah, uh, okay. So. We talked to you from a number of different places. Uh, whatever the women's basketball tournament, SEC tournament was, <laughs> Green, you hated. You hated. Yeah. yeah, Greenville. You hated that. You were in New York for the Heisman. No, you hated that. No, like, uh, Greenville like was good. Greenville. Okay. Yeah, Greenville was Greenville was nice. It grew on me. Yeah. Well, how do we feel about Houston, Houston? Houston is a big old traffic mess. Yes. Holy cow, man, that is uh, it's serious down here. I'm I'm surface street Sam right now. I'm just staying off the interstate. I'm hitting every red light, but mm-hmm. I'm minutes away from Minute Maid, so it'll work out. You going to get some fajitas while you're there? No. No, I had sushi for lunch. How about that? Sushi in Houston? Yeah, why not, right? Barbecue. And it wasn't great. It wasn't great, I'll be honest. Oh it wasn't gosh. great. I made one, just an, this is such a college move by me. We were in Seattle for that uh, that game that she played in Washington in 2009, <laughs> and we were like, we're, yeah. we're in Seattle, supposed to get sushi so we like Googled where to get sushi and we ended up in a strip mall at some all you can eat sushi buffet that was just <laughs> awful. But it was, that's just what college kids do, I guess. Oh, no. I hope it was better than that. I did the same thing. I Googled it and I found one. And uh, like, I'm not a big ramen guy. And yeah. So, uh, like, apparently they got good ramen spots here, but I was looking for a sushi joint. And yes, I passed on the all you can eat sushi, okay. sushi joint. So I did not get that one. All right. But I will say this I will say this, and then we can talk baseball. Uh, they put like mixed greens, like lettuce in the sushi here, and I was not a fan of that. So be on the lookout. Yeah, I'm not going to get sushi in Houston anyway. It's going to be Pinkerton's barbecue or LT Impa fajitas for me just about every single time. Um, so let's talk a little bit about baseball. Um, yesterday, the Twitter fear was, was a buzz saying that Luke Holman's going to start. I know that Jay doesn't release that kind of stuff until 90 minutes before first pitch, so I don't know where that came from. But uh, what are your thoughts on Luke Holman potentially getting a start against Texas tonight? Yeah, no, Frank has confirmed it for okay, us last night. Good. Once once word got out, he uh, shot us all a little text and told us that it was legit. So, I mean, it makes sense, right? Most consistent, maybe outside of Kate Anderson, and uh, obviously we just saw Kate on Wednesday night. So, uh, you like what you've seen out of Holman. You like the as, as Jay likes to say often. You you know you like his heartbeat. Um, it's a big situation that he should be you know ready for, and he certainly looked like he's had the most. As I said, consistent, reliable stuff, and, and that's what coaches are always looking for, right? What do you think Thatcher Hurd's thinking today? I think he's thinking that he's got to, you know, just settle in and, and be himself. The thing with Thatcher, I don't know if you see this, Hunt, but to me, he's fine until he's not, and then it's like a challenge to get him reset. Um, like a little hiccup here or there seems to snowball on him, and he's able to get out of it, you know, at least so far this year. But you can see, like, he needs to be comfortable being uncomfortable. And I think that's the, the, the thing that I'm looking for from him. I think Texas State just hit a walk-off home run in the 10th inning. Two-run shot to beat Houston. Amazing. Houston scored one in the top of the 10th, and Texas State walks it off into the Crawford boxes in game one. So that one's done. It'll be ULL and Vanderbilt coming up here next sometime after 3 o'clock when they're both uh, supposed to get started. So let's go back to uh, to LSU here, uh, Cobble, and we'll go to, uh, to the offense. Um, what has stood out to you so far about this LSU offense through two weeks? Just that it's kind of coming from everywhere. Um, it, nobody is really, nobody is really just taken over, and no one's really, you know, hit, hit the skid. It, it seems like everybody's going to have their moment, and then they're going to have to figure it out a little bit. Um, it, it, it's, it to me, it's perfectly fine where it's at, right? I mean, like you're seeing guys, you're seeing them draw the walks, you're seeing a lot of hit by pitches already, uh, which I'm sure Jay loves. I don't know how much the kids love. <laughs> But um, you know, it's it's um, it, it, you know Brady Neal has obviously been impressive, but you've had you have days like what I watch for, just like like Jaden Travinsky, right? Like it struggles a little bit, but then kind of figures it out, right? So it's it's not like anybody is really scuffling along. Uh, he's mixing up the order so much that I feel like you know you're 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 finding your holes now where you're going to have some success, and then you're finding some some blank holes, you know. So. Some days it's the top of the order and he'll mix it up and then it'll be in the middle of the order. And, and you know, it's just early. 
enough that that I like what he's doing, giving everybody a chance. And that's the thing. Like, you got to think about the number of guys. That's what he said to us yesterday. They got twelve different guys, you know, really that he could plug and play at any one time. It's an embarrassment of riches, but you have to kind of play them all, which means you have to sit them in order to figure out what everybody can do, and it's it's still such a learning process for them. They're going to see a lot of really, really good pitchers over the course of SEC play, specifically on the front end of SEC play. They'll see one tonight in LeBaron Johnson from Texas. How big a deal is tonight for this lineup against the best arm that they'll have seen thus far? I think it's it's huge, right? I mean, but again, it's what, the fourth week of the season? So it's it's huge in context. It's it's great to be challenged and to see what they can do. Okay, there you go. Got the old GPS working for me. Um, you know, it's it's important for them to see what they can do against some quality arms. They've struggled at times. Uh, so again, I think it's just as important to see them fight through it. That's what I've the thing that I've liked most about this team, regardless. I guess I could turn this off now. Regardless of um, pitching, hitting, fielding, they've, they've kind of fought through the adversity and figured it out. And that's what you want to see, right? You want to see, see them fight, see them learn, see them grow. Uh, because, yeah, SECs are right around the corner. I've got to I've asked this question to everybody that's come on to talk a little bit of baseball, but Stephen Milam's kind of uh, taken this thing by storm for the first two weeks and not somebody that we talked a ton about preseason, but has done it on the field. What are your impressions of the, uh, the freshman second baseman? Got to talk to him for the first time yesterday. Uh, really confident, you know, talked about just his success early and he said he wasn't all that surprised. Uh, didn't seem to, you know, really register as an anomaly with him. It's something that he did a lot in his high school ball, playing multiple positions. Uh, to me, it felt like, to him, it felt very natural and normal. And that's, man, that's great, right? If you have a freshman that's coming in and doesn't seem to be too overwhelmed, um, understanding you know, his, his chances of getting better, you know, in this system, um, I just think it's, it's really cool to watch somebody come in that's undersized like this. Here's a great line. Uh, I think he, he told us, uh, he said that Paul Maneri told him big guys have to prove that the, they can't play, and little guys have to prove they can. So that was that was like a little nugget that I was like, yeah. you know, so we obviously talked to Coach Mary a little bit. You know, he certainly Paul understands that dynamic. Uh, you know, probably better than most. So um, just really cool. I, I liked uh, his demeanor. I think that's probably what stood out to me the most. And obviously his fielding, his range. Uh, you know, he had an error the other night at, at Rice. I'm not sure that that couldn't have been shared a little bit with uh, Jared Jones at first, picking it a little bit better, but. Uh, We lose Michael there. Did you lose me? I got you back now. I got you back now. Okay. And so the I, the last question I wanted to ask you is we're, as we're uh, we're getting close to first pitch for Vanderbilt and uh, and UL Lafayette. Uh, is there any uh, any what's the what does ULL call their red? Um, Rage and Cajuns. Oh, uh, vermilion. Red. Vermilion red. That's what I was looking for. Any of that uh, surfacing in Houston? Around the SEC, bringing you oh, okay. the biggest news from that. the nation's uh, best conference. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, no, not really, but I did just get down to the ballpark, so, um... Well, I'd figure they'd, no, be, I they'd be around the ballpark right now. They're scheduled for first pitch at three, and it's 242. I would think that'd be about time for them to be strolling in. Well, what I'm saying is, hon, I just pulled in, so I haven't really... Uh, uh, I got a homeless guy. I got a homeless guy over here to the left. Wing that's, uh, he's, he's ready to rock and roll. He's not wearing any red, though. That's lovely. All right, how do you think they play this weekend? You think they, uh, they win two, they win three, they, uh, have a losing weekend? How do you think it goes? No, I think two is certainly in the works. Uh, I don't see any way that they don't probably uh, take two. Jay talked about the aggressive nature of the two teams that they're playing. So I think, again, it'll get their attention. And uh, that's what you really want to see is just a, a team that can kind of, you know, put it together, obviously stepping up in class. The guys that we talked to yesterday were very excited about the opportunity to take on a Texas and kind of challenge themselves. That's the vibe that I was getting. Uh, obviously playing in this ballpark is, uh, alluring to anyone you know that wants to be a professional baseball player like these guys do so uh it's, it's just i think a great atmosphere it makes a lot of sense jay talked about the reasonings you know there's two recruits in the houston area right now that they're trying to land he said the you know they were at this series two years ago when they came and um you know it's a big reason why they're coming to lsu so just a great hotbed for alumni and recruiting it, it just makes a lot of sense to do stuff like this enjoy the weekend safe travels back thanks cobble
Wish me luck with this homeless guy. You got it, dude. That's Michael Koppel, sports director at WBRZ from Houston. I'll, I'll add to what he was saying there. It's It really is an awesome weekend. I've been uh, three or four times uh, when LSU has been to Houston. I've got a good buddy that lives over there, and we played some golf. We went to a Rockets game one year. The ballpark's really nice. Um, there's some bars downtown around it that you can hang out in, and uh, it creates a really good environment, especially when LSU and Texas play. Uh, it's a lot of fun. So uh, for those that have not been and aren't going this weekend, uh, try uh, one of these years to get over there. I think LSU's going to alternate this round rock and, and uh, Houston deal, and it's it's a lot of fun, and it's a pretty manageable drive from most places down here in uh, in South Louisiana. i got a buddy that's flying direct from uh, – from New Orleans today, and that's a that's a pretty easy one as well. So a lot of fun over there in Houston, LSU and Texas tonight at seven o'clock. Our Friday shows brought to you by Corks Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp, CorksFishandShrimp.com. We've got fantastic loaded baked potatoes over there at Corks. So Lenten Friday, not gonna eat meat. How about a loaded baked potato with some crawfish etouffee on top? Doesn't sound too bad. It is awesome. Uh, their menu is great. You can check it at corksfishandshrimp.com. They can handle your catering orders no matter how big. I was over there last Friday, and they were sending about 40 plates to a couple of local businesses for, for lunch for the staff on a Friday. They can do that for yours as well. Just contact them at corksfishandshrimp.com or stop by the government location. Tell Paul and Michael that we sent you in there. Corks, a great uh, year old now. Uh, the new food concept here in Baton Rouge is from the same guys that brought you Kuyon's Barbecue over in Port Allen. Corks Fish and Shrimp. It's at corksfishandshrimp.com. One more break, one more segment to go. It's the Hunt Palmer Show. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. ESPN Bet is now live in Louisiana as the official sports book of ESPN. ESPN Bet is the only place to find daily exclusives and offers with your favorite ESPN personalities and shows. You can sign up today. New users get $100 in bonus bets for making any sports book bet. You can find all your favorite markets, all your favorite bets, in game wagering, cross sport parlays, teasers, and all the props you can handle. That's ESPN Bet. You can download today. What a play. Must be 21 or older. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700. In partnership with LaBear's Lake Charles, terms and conditions apply. See app for details. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans.
Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal. And Monday's OTB will recap LSU Baseball's trip to Houston. Did they manage to get it done against the Longhorns? Plus, Jim, men and women's basketball, NFL Combine news, draft, a ton to get to this Monday. It's off the bench, 7 to 10 a.m., 104.5 ESPN. This is the Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. You know, sometimes we start talking about golf and they shoot like 57 or they, you know, birdie eight of the nine holes or something. Yep. You know, I don't like our chances of playing on the tour. Mm-hmm. There is some hope. Thomas Dietrich today at PGA National at what was once the Honda over in Florida had a six putt on the sixth hole. Six putt. The most putts by any player on a single hole since this tournament moved to PGA National. Most by a single hole. On, on tour since Danny Lee six putted on 18 in round three of the 2020 U.S. Open, six putt, and and that's under, I could do better than that. And yeah, and, I and, would have done better than that. And while a six putt at the U.S. Open is still obviously it's a lot more understandable than at yes. the Cognizant Classic yes. at, at PJ National, <laughs> it is still pretty astounding. But but six putts at the Honda, I don't think the greens are probably not running uh, super hot. I mean they're probably you know pretty quick, but. Six putts? That's awful. I would have done that. I'd have three putted that baby all day. That's half. At least three. Or sorry, sorry. Well, three or maybe less. uh, Maybe two. I'm thinking probably three. Probably so. All right, let's play take it or leave it. All right, first one here, if I can pull it up in a second. All right, the NCAA will adopt the use of player to coach helmet communication systems and tablets for the sidelines. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. Sounds good. I'll do it in the NFL. It's fine. I don't know how much that impacts with home crowds and the noise and all that kind of stuff. And But I, I don't think it's going to change materially for the fans who are watching. And I think it just makes things a little easier and more efficient for the players and coaches. Get the play in and run it. Let's go. I'm good with it. College football will also be going to a two-minute warning this year. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. It's fine. I'll I mean, take it. you know, they, they did away with the clock stopping on first downs last year, and they think it cost teams uh, four or five plays per game. Um, as far as this goes, you're adding a timeout late in games. One of the things that's most evident when you watch the NFL on Sundays as opposed to college football on Saturdays, the NFL is worlds better in their two-minute offense. They don't even need timeouts. They, the quarterbacks just tend to go right down the field. Colleges have a hard time doing that. Uh, this does help. Uh, you give them an extra timeout late, so probably helps the team that's losing in this instance. Uh, but, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with it. I don't think it's a big deal. Oklahoma has named its baseball park. After oh they, they I guess they're gonna be sponsored by Love's Truck that's Stops, true. Love's Field. Take it or leave it. I mean, <laughs> that's just not a great look. No. I guess look, Texas A&M is very sponsored, but it's a cool. It's Blue Bell, and well, I will say this: like I, I do stop at Love's on the road sometimes. They got this little like taquitos that are hot in there. Yep, they got yep. some decent food and a lot, and usually good bathrooms. So my wife's a big Love's proponent. There's a Love's just north of Alexandria. That we're on the way to Shreveport. We usually hit that. So it's a great gas station. I don't know about naming your. Your baseball field for a gas station. But, hey, money's money, and you're going to take that. I'm guessing the guy who started Love's Truck Stop is an Oklahoma senior. Uh, so the, the Tigers will be uh, visiting Love's Field at some point uh, sometime in the near future. So get ready for that. All right, last one here. Anthony Kim struggled in his return to professional golf, firing a 6-over-76, seven bogeys and one birdie. That's good for last place in the star-studded field at the Live Event in Saudi Arabia today. Kim will play in a major at some point before he retires. Take it or leave it. Uh, I'll leave it. I mean, he's been out of the game a long time. It's yeah. a young man's game now, and he's not young anymore. Um, it's really hard out there. I, I don't. Doesn't look good either. He he yeah. looks rough. I don't he know what I don't know what he was doing in his time off, but it probably what wasn't is, great. What does last place in a live event pay? Like twenty million? I don't know. Maybe something like that. I guess. <laughs> I, I don't. They didn't. Re- they didn't uh, say what his contract deals are, but. He's uh yeah last place not what great. What team is he on? The Crushers, Team I, Smash. So I the don't think he's, Fireballs, the High Flyers. I, I don't think he's on a team right now. I what? Think, yeah, he's just like a wild card. I think. 
Well, this not, is ridiculous. Not, yeah, he's got to be on they the team. They don't just let guys walk out on an NFL field and play. This yeah. is team golf. Yeah. We need teams. You can't just walk out there and play on your own. I know. LSU and Texas aren't going to go out there and play and then have some other guy play in right field by yeah. himself. It's kind of it's kind of uh, unbelievable that Liv would do something like this. It really is. Jeez. Hate to see that, but I'm sure yeah. he'll, I'm, I, I'm, I bet last place for Anthony Kim and the live event this week play, pays 700000 At that's least, just yeah. What it, it's just the biggest cash grab hit and giggle I've ever seen. All right, that'll do it uh, for our Friday show presented by Corks. We open things up with LSU and Texas. Uh, they'll be doing battle here probably a little bit after 7 o'clock from Minute Made. my preview at the top of the show. Preston Guy talking NFL Combine, Jaden Daniels, Brian Thomas, Malik Neighbors, and the like. You can catch that at Hunt on LSU on YouTube. Chris Tamui talking baseball at 1.30. Had Steve Schneider, lots of high school action on the hardwood in South Louisiana the next two weeks, and they've got it all for you on LHSAA, uh, LHSA Network. Uh, that you can find on Roku. LSU and Vanderbilt. Let's Two, go stack. Uh, mm-hmm, they're not going to win. I think LSU is going to dust Vanderbilt tomorrow. I hope they do. Uh, but you've got, you're, you're inside 24 hours from winning that bet at this point with Stackhouse coaching that one. Marcus May is out in New Orleans. That's uh, You can find that at Hunt on Saints. My thoughts on the Marcus May signing and what they can do to replace him in the defensive secondary. And Michael Cobble joined us from Houston for a bit of a scene setter there from Minute Maid Park. If you missed any of it, catch it on demand. 104.5 ESPN.com's on demand tab, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, wherever you find your sound, you can find us. And you can always find us on YouTube. Appreciate any likes, subscriptions, rates, reviews, all of that. We certainly do appreciate it. Hope everybody has a wonderful weekend. That's about to drive you home on After Further Review. We're back Monday, same time, same place. Casey Gaines, thanks so much for all of your hard work. Have a great weekend, everybody. It's the Hunt Palmer Show. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared toward seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work, creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, (laughs) playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. 